U.S. President Donald Trump has fired the director of the FBI over his handling of the inquiry into Hillary Clinton's emails, the administration says. The White House shocked Washington by announcing that James Comey has been terminated and removed from office. But Democrats said he was fired because the FBI was investigating alleged links between the Trump campaign and Russia. The move came as it emerged Mr. Comey gave inaccurate information about Mrs. Clinton's emails to Congress last week. Mr. Comey was addressing FBI agents in Los Angeles when, according to Politico and the New York Times, he learned he had just been fired when he saw the news on television. The 56-year-old, who was three and a half years into his 10-year term as FBI director, reportedly laughed, thinking it was a prank. The White House said the search for a successor would begin immediately. It is only the second time for the head of the FBI to be fired. Why does the administration say Comey was fired? President Trump wrote in a letter to Mr. Comey that he agreed with U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions' recommendation that you are not able to effectively lead the bureau. Mr. Sessions said the Department of Justice was committed to a high level of discipline, integrity, and the rule of law and a fresh start is needed. Many have expressed surprise that Mr. Cummy should be fired for his handling of the investigation into Mrs. Clinton's use of a private email server for sensitive government business, given that Mr. Trump once praised the FBI director's conduct in the matter. In the final days of the presidential campaign, Mr. Trump told a rally it took guts for Mr. Cummy to reopen the inquiry. What he did brought back his reputation. Mr. Trump said. But on Tuesday, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein said he cannot defend the director's handling of the conclusion of the investigation of Secretary Clinton's emails, and I do not understand his refusal to accept the nearly universal judgment that he was mistaken. Almost everyone agrees the director made serious mistakes. It is one of the few issues that unites people of diverse perspectives, Mr. Rosenstein also said. Mr. Cummey had been wrong to usurp the previous Attorney General in July 2016 when he announced the Clinton emails inquiry should be closed without prosecution. That he had compounded his error by gratuitously releasing derogatory information about Mrs. Clinton. What about the Russia investigation? Democrats swiftly suggested that Mr. Trump had fired Mr. Cummey to influence the FBI inquiry into whether members of the Trump election campaign colluded with the Kremlin. The House of Representatives and Senate Intelligence Committees are looking into the same allegations. Were these investigations getting too close to home for the president? Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer asked a Tuesday evening press conference. This does not seem to be a coincidence. He added. Mr. Trump responded on Twitter that Mr. Schumer had recently expressed his lack of confidence in the FBI chief. The firing is drawing comparisons with the so called Saturday Night Massacre of 1973, when President Richard Nixon fired an independent special prosecutor investigating the Watergate scandal. But President Trump has repeatedly insisted the Russia allegations are fake news. What are Republicans saying? I am troubled by the timing and reasoning of Jim Cummey's termination. Richard Burr, the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. My staff and I are reviewing legislation to establish an independent commission on Russia. Just in a mash, a conservative Michigan congressman, adding that a line in Mr. Trump's letter, that Mr. Cummey had informed him three times he was not under investigation, was just bizarre. Nebraska Senator Ben Sass, a long-standing Trump critic, said the timing of the firing is very troubling. A cover-up? Anthony Zercher, BBC News Washington. Donald Trump and senior Justice Department officials are framing the firing of James Cummey as a result of his botched investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server. They do so using language that even Clinton backers would probably support. Democrats, to put it bluntly, aren't buying it. However, not from this White House. They are dismissing this Clinton explanation as a smokescreen, and view the suddenness of the move as an attempt to subvert the ongoing FBI investigation into possible ties between Russia and the Trump campaign. At the very least, their calls for an independent investigation into the matter will become deafening.
and some Republicans may now be inclined to agree. Mr. Cummy has been criticized by Democrats for the handling of his investigation into whether Mrs. Clinton's use of a private email server when Secretary of State compromised national security. The now former FBI director made two interventions during the 2016 election campaign to make pronouncements about the investigation. He said in July the case should be closed without prosecution, but then declared, 11 days before November's election, that he had reopened the inquiry because of the discovery of a new drove of Clinton-related emails. What was Clinton FBI probe about? He told the Senate last week it had made him mildly nauseous to think his intervention could have affected the election, but insisted he would make the same decision again. Mrs. Clinton lays part of the blame for her shock election defeat last November on Mr. Cummy. Mr. Cummy told the Senate Judiciary Committee on 3 May that Mrs. Clinton's top aide, Huma Bedin, had forwarded hundreds and thousands of emails, some of which contained classified information to her husband. But the FBI conceded on Tuesday that Emza Bedin had sent only two email chains containing classified information to her husband, Anthony Weiner, the printing. President Donald Trump has fired the man who played a big role in last year's election. FBI Director James Cummey has been dismissed, White House spokesman Sean Spicer said. The president has accepted the recommendation of the attorney general and the deputy attorney general regarding the dismissal of the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Spicer told reporters in the briefing room. Spicer also said that Cummy was notified a short time ago. This is effective immediately, he said. Trump's letter said, while I greatly appreciate you informing me, on three separate occasions, that I am not under investigation. I nevertheless concur with the judgment of the Department of Justice that you are not able to effectively lead the Bureau. I have accepted their recommendation and you are hereby terminated and removed from office, effective immediately, the letter said. It is essential that we find new leadership for the FBI that restores public trust and confidence in its vital law enforcement mission. Earlier in the day. The FBI notified Congress that Cummy misstated key findings involving the Hillary Clinton email investigation during testimony last week, saying that only a small number of emails had been forwarded to disgraced Congressman Anthony Weiner, not the hundreds and thousands he'd claimed in his testimony. The letter was sent to the Senate Judiciary Committee on Tuesday, Wednesday East, more than a week after Cummy testified for hours in defense of his handling of the Clinton probe. This letter is intended to supplement that testimony to ensure that the committee has the full context of what was reviewed and found on the laptop, wrote FBI Assistant Director Gregory Brower. In defending the probe at last week's hearing, Cummy offered seemingly new details to underscore the seriousness of the situation FBI agents faced last fall when they discovered thousands of Clinton aid Humor Bedin's emails on the computer of her husband, Anthony Weiner. Somehow, her emails were being forwarded to Anthony Weiner, including classified information, Kami said, adding later, his then-spouse Huma Bedden appears to have had a regular practice of forwarding emails to him for him I think to print out for her so she could then deliver them to the Secretary of State. At another point in the testimony, Kami said Abedin forwarded hundreds and thousands of emails, some of which contained classified information. Neither of those statements is accurate, said people close to the investigation. Tuesday's letter said most of the emails found on Mr. Weiner's laptop computer related to the Clinton investigation occurred as a result of a backup of personal electronic devices, with a small number a result of manual forwarding by Emza Bedin to Mr. Weiner. The letter also corrected the impression Mr. Cummy's testimony had left with some listeners that 12 classified emails were among those forwarded by Abedin to Wiener. Investigators identified approximately 49,000 emails which were potentially relevant to the investigation, the letter said. All were reviewed with a particular focus on those containing classified information. Investigators ultimately determined that two email chains containing classified information were manually forwarded to Mr. Weiner's account.
10 other emails chains that contained classified information were found on the laptop as a result of backup activity. The letter also clarified some of the figures Cummy gave regarding ongoing terrorism probes. The issue of Cummy's misstatements was first reported by ProPublica. At the hearing, the statements about her bed and email practices were immediately seized on by Senator Ted Cruz, a Republican from Texas, and others, who demanded to know why Bedden wasn't charged with a crime. Cummy said it was difficult finding evidence those involved in Clinton's use of private email knowingly engaged in wrongdoing, and that traditionally the Justice Department has not prosecuted such cases without some indicator of intent. Cummy's incorrect comments about Abedin surfaced again this week at a different Senate hearing, when Cruz pressed former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper Jr. to say how he would handle an employee who forwarded hundreds or even thousands of emails to a non-government individual, their spouse, on a non-government computer. Clapper said such conduct raises all kinds of potential security concerns. At the hearing last week, Cummy spent hours defending his handling of the investigation of Clinton's use of a private server for work while she was Secretary of State, saying it made him mildly nauseous to think his decisions might have affected the outcome of the presidential election, but insisting that he had no regrets and would not have handled it differently. Cummy's decision-making during the Clinton inquiry has come under sustained criticism from Democrats including Clinton, who say it was a major factor that contributed to her presidential election defeat in November to Donald Trump. On October 28, less than two weeks before Election Day, the director notified Congress that new Clinton-related emails had been found on a laptop belonging to Wiener. Days later, investigators obtained a search warrant to examine about 3,000 messages on the device that were work-related. Of those, Cummy said, Agents found a dozen that contained classified information, but they were messages investigators had already seen. Cummy's public comments about the Clinton case have been a source of public debate since he first announced last July that he would not recommend charges against anyone in connection with her use of a private server for government business. At the time, he called the use of the server extremely careless but said it did not rise to the level of a crime. The misstatements in testimony aren't the first time Cummy has overstated a key fact in a high-profile probe. A year ago, while speaking at a security forum in London, the director miscalculated the price the FBI had paid for a technique to crack into a locked iPhone belonging to one of the dead suspects in a terrorist attack in San Bernardino, California. At the event, he said the cost of the phone hacking tool was more than I will make in the remainder of this job which is seven years and four months, for sure. Based on Cummy's salary, his comments strongly implied the Bureau paid at least 1.3 million US dollars, 1.8 million dollars, to get into the phone, which belonged to Sedrazwan Farouk. Farouk and his wife killed 14 people during a December 2015 terrorist attack. President Trump on Tuesday fired the director of the FBI, James B. Cummy abruptly terminating the top official leading a criminal investigation into whether Mr. Trump's advisers colluded with the Russian government to steer the outcome of the 2016 presidential election. The stunning development in Mr. Trump's presidency raised the specter of political interference by a sitting president into an existing investigation by the nation's leading law enforcement agency. It immediately ignited Democratic calls for a special counsel to lead the Russia inquiry. Mr. Trump explained the firing by citing Mr. Cummy's handling of the investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server, even though the president was widely seen to have benefited politically from that inquiry and had once praised Mr. Cummy for his guts in his pursuit of Mrs. Clinton during the campaign. But in his letter to Mr. Cummy, Released to reporters by the White House, the president betrayed his focus on the continuing inquiry into Russia and his aides. While I greatly appreciate you informing me, on three separate occasions, that I am not under investigation, I nevertheless concur with the judgment of the Department of Justice that you are not able to effectively lead the Bureau, Mr. Trump said in a letter to Mr. Cummy dated Tuesday.
White House officials refused to say anything more about the three occasions Mr. Trump cited. Continue reading the main story. The officials said that Attorney General Jeff Sessions and the Deputy Attorney General, Rod J. Rosenstein, pushed for Mr. Cummings' dismissal. But many in Washington, including veteran FBI officers, saw a carefully choreographed effort by the president to create a pretense for a takedown of the president's FBI tormentor. I cannot defend the director's handling of the conclusion of the investigation of Secretary Clinton's emails, Mr. Rosenstein wrote in another letter that was released by the White House, and I do not understand his refusal to accept the nearly universal judgment that he was mistaken. Reaction in Washington was swift and fierce. Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, the Democratic leader, said the firing could make Americans suspect a cover-up. Mr. Trump lashed back later Tuesday night in a Twitter post, crying Chuck Schumer stated recently, I do not have confidence in him, James Cummy, any longer. Then acts so indignant. Many Republicans assailed the president for making a rash decision that could have deep implications for their party. Representative Justin Amash, Republican of Michigan, said on Twitter that he now supports an independent commission to investigate the Russia links to Mr. Trump. He called Mr. Trump's claim that Mr. Cummy had cleared him three times bizarre. I've spent the last several hours trying to find an acceptable rationale for the timing of Cummy's firing, Senate to Jeff Flake, Republican of Arizona, said on Twitter. I just can't do it. In a sign of the FBI's intense interest in Mr. Trump's advisers, a grand jury in Virginia issued subpoenas in recent weeks for records related to the former White House National Security Advisor, Michael T. Flynn, according to an American official familiar with the case. Mr. Flynn is under investigation for his financial ties to Russia and Turkey. Grand jury subpoenas are a routine part of federal investigations and are not a sign that charges are imminent. It was not clear that the subpoenas, which were first reported by CNN, were related to Mr. Cummings' firing. The dismissal ended the long deteriorating relationship of Mr. Trump and Mr. Cummy, who repeatedly collided publicly and privately. For Mr. Trump, a president who puts a premium on loyalty, Mr. Cummy represented an independent and unpredictable director with enormous power to disrupt his administration. Mr. Cummy learned from news reports that he had been fired while addressing bureau employees in Los Angeles. While Mr. Cummy spoke, television screens in the background began flashing the news. In response to the reports, Mr. Cummy laughed, saying that he thought it was a fairly funny prank. Shortly after, Mr. Trump's letter was delivered to FBI headquarters in Washington. Mr. Cummy was three years into a ten year term, an unusually long tenure that Congress established to insulate the director from political pressure. Though the president has the authority to fire the FBI director for any reason, Mr. Cummy is only the second director to be fired in bureau history. President Bill Clinton fired William S. Sessions in 1993. Mr. Trump had already fired his acting attorney general for insubordination and his national security adviser for lying to Vice President Mike Pence about contacts with Russians. But firing Mr. Cummy raises much deeper questions about the independence of the FBI and the future of its investigations under Mr. Trump. In an instance of bizarre timing and optics, the White House announced late Tuesday night that Mr. Trump would meet on Wednesday in the Oval Office with Sergei V. Lavrov, Russia's foreign minister. FBI agents were enraged by the firing and worried openly that Mr. Trump would appoint a White House ally to lead them. Mr. Cummy was widely liked in the FBI, even by those who criticized his handling of the Clinton investigation. Agents regarded him as a good manager and an independent director. It is essential that we find new leadership for the FBI that restores public trust and confidence in its vital law enforcement mission, Mr. Trump wrote, a remark that particularly upset agents who saw it as an insult to them. The White House has not said what precipitated the firing, a significant question because the Justice Department's stated reasons were well known even when Mr. Trump decided in January to keep Mr. Cummy on the job.
Mr. Trump watched last week as Mr. Cummy testified on Capitol Hill, offering his first public explanation of his handling of the Clinton email case. There, Mr. Cummy said that he had no regrets about his decisions or that he felt mildly nauseous that his actions might have tipped the election to Mr. Trump. The Clinton controversy centers on a news conference Mr. Cummy held last July, when he broke with long-standing tradition and policies by publicly discussing the Clinton case and chastising Mrs. Clinton's careless handling of classified information. Then, in the campaign's final days, Mr. Cummy announced that the FBI was reopening the investigation, a move that earned him widespread criticism. At the time, though, Mr. Trump and his attorney general, Mr. Sessions, praised Mr. Cummy for actions that are now at the heart of the FBI director's firing. Mr. Trump saw an opening to fire Mr. Cummy after the testimony, a White House official said. Rians Priebus, the White House chief of staff, argued against it, delaying, but not overruling, the decision. Mr. Trump received the documents from the Justice Department on Tuesday. Aides also compiled a stack of news clips criticizing Mr. Cummy. Mr. Cummy's firing came hours after the FBI corrected his testimony last week about how classified information ended up on the laptop of the disgraced former Congressman Anthony D. Weiner. Mr. Cummy had told the Senate Judiciary Committee that during the FBI's investigation into Mrs. Clinton's use of a private email server while Secretary of State, Officers uncovered evidence that her aide, Humor Bedin, had forwarded hundreds and thousands of emails, some of which contained classified information to Mr. Weiner, her husband. But the FBI told Congress that only a few of the emails had been forwarded and that the vast majority were simply backed up to Mr. Weiner's laptop. Mr. Cummings' deputy, Andrew G. McCabe, a career FBI officer, became acting director. The Justice Department said, the White House said the search for a director will begin immediately. The firing puts Democrats in a difficult position. Many had hoped that Mrs. Clinton would fire Mr. Cummy soon after taking office, and blamed him as costing her the election. But under Mr. Trump, Mr. Cummy was seen as an important check on the new administration. Kellyanne Conway, a senior White House advisor, said the firing was not related to Russia. Today's actions had zero to do with that, she said in a contentious interview on CNN. Democrats were unconvinced. Any attempt to stop or undermine this FBI investigation would raise grave constitutional issues, said Senator Richard J. Durbin, Democrat of Illinois. Mr. Trump's decision to fire Mr. Cummy marks the president's latest law enforcement purge. In early February, Mr. Trump fired Sally Q. Yates who had worked in the Obama administration but was serving as acting attorney general. In March, he fired Preet Brara, the United States attorney in Manhattan, after assuring the prosecutor months earlier that he could stay on. But the president's firing of Mr. Cummy was far more consequential, as Miss Yates and Mr. Brara both were holdovers, and might only have served in the Trump administration for a matter of days or weeks. A longtime prosecutor who served as the Deputy Attorney General during the George W. Bush administration, Mr. Cummy came into office in 2013 with widespread bipartisan support. The defining moment in Mr. Cummy's career, until Tuesday night, came in 2004 during a hospital room standoff with White House officials who wanted to pressure the Justice Department to reauthorize a secret wiretapping program. Mr. Cummy stood his ground. Mr. Trump has been furious with news stories about his campaign's ties to Russia. The White House has been critical of the leaks at the heart of those stories and tried unsuccessfully to enlist Mr. Cummy in an effort to rebut the stories. In a Twitter message last week, Mr. Trump accused Mr. Cummy of being the best thing that ever happened to Hillary Clinton, and said he gave her a free pass for many bad deeds. After the president accused former President Barack Obama of wiretapping his office, Mr. Cummy publicly declared those claims untrue. Senator Ron Widden, Democrat of Oregon and a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, said in a post on Twitter that Mr. Cummy should be immediately called to testify in an open hearing about the status of Russia, 
Trump investigation at the time he was fired. Before announcing the firing, Mr. Trump called leaders on Capitol Hill to tell them of his decision. Mr. Schumer told Mr. Trump that he was making a big mistake. Mr. Trump paused. Okay, he said. We'll see.